Hey, happy Monday. It's the Zen Witch, and it's time for an unboxing of a tarot deck. And this morning, the deck is the Wildwood Tarot, wherein Wisdom Resides by Mark Ryan and John Matthews with card illustrations by Will Worthington. This is refreshing to see um, the majority, you know, vast majority, I think, of decks that I have anyway are um, by women. And I mean, is that true? Now I'm not sure that that's true, but I want to find out. And welcome to my second cup of coffee, by the way. This is a morning shoot, but it's really gray. Um, and you know what? I'm going to take a second and show you my woods. This is my paradise out here. And we have a high wind warning this morning. So things are starting to dance a little bit. Not quite a lot yet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for going on that little journey with me. Anyway, here's the Wildwood Tarot. <clears throat> Wildwood, this is a uh, pack contains 160 page illustrated guidebook, 78 cards. It's by Sterling Ethos. The Wildwood Tarot will take you on a mystical journey for answers. Look to the heart of a primeval forest where deep ancestral wisdom lies to help make sense of your world today. A beautifully illustrated card deck, the Wildwood Tarot is fun to use as a meditation system, a divinatory oracle, or a source of profound knowledge. The cards draw inspiration from pre-Celtic pre mythology and a belief system steeped in shamanic mysteries. It's easy to quickly ask access the magical lore of the Wildwood through descriptions of each card revealing its historical and mythological background as well as its divinatory meaning. From the green man and woman to the hooded man and blasted oak, authors Mark Ryan and John Matthews introduce forest archetypes based, on the se based in the seasonal rhythms and festivals of the ancient year. Step back in time to better understand where your life's path may lead. Again, 78 cards, 160-page booklet, Sterling Ethos, New York. Uh, we don't have a copyright on this, but we'll look at it in the book. Nice big box. And, okay. I mean, the so these things are where you put your thumbs to hold it when you take the lid off. Why are they at the ends like that? That doesn't make much sense because <laughs> I can't do that. Okay. And look at this great um, shaman, clearly female, with the antlers on her head. And then we've got like the hermit here. Let's look at the copyright. Rat quick. Uh, 2019. This is new, new, new. We have the deck separated into two chunks in the box. And it's a chunky deck. So very sturdy cards, but it's, it's a thick boy. <laughs> yeah, it really is a handful. Okay, let's look at the backs. We have kind of a Celtic tree of life where the roots go down and intertwine as Celtic knots. Wake up fairies, wake up fairies. There we are. Really nice. And so here we go. Let's wait till we refocus here. There we are. The Wanderer is the Fool card. I like his little braid. Look at the rainbow. So he's stepping off a cliff, but there's almost like a rainbow bridge here in front of his feet. Still stepping off into midair. Chasing rainbows. The Shaman. Ooh, look at him. He's got like a, a bear on his head. That looks like a bear to me. And we've got an altar with um, the tools. There's a, a like an antelope skull for a wand. There's a, oh, there's a hollowed out antler for a cup. There's <clears throat> an athame. And we've got a little fire. 
brewing there. I guess the stone itself would be the pentagram. The seer for the high priestess card. Look at her shawl of owl feathers. Ooh, she's lovely. And look at her looking in the, the basin. The green woman for the empress. Look at her appleiness. Look at her appley belly. Ooh, I love this. And look at there's like little imps in her hands. She is certainly the green woman. And then we have the green man. Look at himself there. Look at the horn. Oh my, I have a huge drinking horn and it's really fun at, at gatherings with people to fill it because you can't set it down. <laughs> you have to keep passing it until it's all empty. The Ancestor. So this is in place of the Hierophant. The Forest Lovers. Kind of around a maypole tree, and they are hand fasted. Look at the, look at the ribbon there. With some lilies, the archer. This, I believe, would be the strength card. The stag. I am not going to try to relate them to tarot here. The hermit, the hooded man is the hermit. Look at the wren. Oh my, look at the wren. Wait, pop in. There's a wreath. There's a wren. We have wrens that come and visit us like on the solstice every year. The wheel. That's pretty interesting. It's like a shirt. It is a shirt. Is it being woven? I mean, you don't weave a shirt. You weave fabric, and then you make it into a shirt. Interesting. The wheel. The wood ward. Kind of like a guardian spirit. And look at the links there. The mirror. Oh. Look at her. All right. This is my ranking favorite in the deck so far. With a heron. Uh-oh. Had to take an hour's break there for some uh, important family calls coming in. Continuing the journey. This would be the death card, if the numbers are true. Balance. Look at the serpents. Entwining. The Guardian. That looks like a big bear. Come on. How close do I have to get? <laughs> the Blasted Oak. That's a tower card for sure. The Pole Star. Oops, they want to stick together. The moon on water. Oh, look at that. One of my favorite things in the whole wide world is full moonlight coming through bare trees onto snow and moonlight on water is a close second. Just looking at the creatures there, we've got a bull. We've got a heron. We've got herons flying. The sun of life. The Great Bear. There we go. Mm. The World Tree. The Labyrinth. And now we come into... Um, ah. We come into the court cards first. King of Arrows. Kingfisher. So the first of the suits is Arrows. Queen of Arrows is Swan. Knight of Arrows is Hawk, and Page of Arrows is Wren. So we have animal totems as the court cards. 
I like that. And then we're to the Ace of Arrows, the Breath of Life. And I like the idea of arrows um, being air. And this is getting me excited because obviously this is air. Arrows, not blades. Me likey. Two of arrows in justice. Very cool. That very much echoes the standard tarot imagery. Three of arrows, jealousy. Look at that. Ooh, a flaming heart pierced by arrows that you yourself shot. Oh, what an image that is. Four of arrows is rest. And look, all the arrows have missed him. <laughs> Five of arrows, frustration. I love the keywords. Frustration. Look, he's shooting all these arrows and can't hit the mark. I love this imagery. Six of arrows, transition. Seven is insecurity. Look at her. Did it do it? It did it. The eight of arrows is struggle. So these do have the vibe of swords. You know, I was looking at that one with the scales. Edge of eight of arrows is struggle. The nine of arrows is dedication. And the ten is instruction. I like that too. So we'll see when we get to... All right, and then we have bows. The king of bows is adder. So we have bows and arrows. The queen of bows is hare. The knight of bows is fox. And the page of bows is stoat, which is a weasel. The ace of... Oh, God, I have to go again, turn my alarm off. Hold on. Is this why I don't shoot videos in the morning? Though it's not morning anymore, it's now noon. Ace of bows, spark of life. So the bows are fire. Interesting. Two of bows is decision. And, and we can see kind of the wands um, imagery for fire. So I, I'm okay. I'm going to confuse myself. So never mind. Two of bows is decision. Three is fulfillment. I really like the keywords here. Four is celebration. Look at the women partying. Very feminine. Five of bows is empowerment. Six abundance. Interesting. You wouldn't think in fire and, you know, creative energy as abundance and manifestation, but very interesting. Seven is clearance. So the bows have a very wandy vibe to them. Eight is heart, hearth fire. And there we have the men gathering together. Nine is respect. Oh, look at him. Ten is responsibility. So these definitely have the wand vibe. So we still have wands as fire and blades as air, but they're arrows instead of blades. Nine, look at that respect, holding the boundaries. That's very cool. Responsibility. Then we have... Stones, which of course are going to be pentacles. And we have the king of stones is wolf. Oh, yes. Queen of stones is bear. Power cards. Knight of stones is horse. These are seriously powerful. And the page of stones is lynx. I love it. Ace is foundation of life. We've got all the... Uh, carvings on the rocks, all the symbols. Two of stones is challenge. Three, creativity. Look at her. Four is protection. Oh, shelter. 
would be another great word for that. Five of stones is endurance. I love this. Okay, so think of Five of Pentacles where uh, you're shown sort of out in the cold. You know, usually it's passing a church window where there's light streaming through and you get the idea of people being safe and warm inside and the people outside are out in the cold, left out. Um, five of Stones is endurance. So it talks about getting through those tough times rather than just being in them. How do we get through? It's an, a test of endurance. Six of Stones is exploitation. Hmm. We've got hives. Okay. Seven is healing. That's lovely. Eight is skill. Goes with the Eight of Pentacles. Nine of Stones is tradition. Ooh, look at him from the Gundestrup Cauldron. And Ten of Stones is home. Yup. I always call Ten of Pentacles the, the stable family card. Then we have Vessels. The King of Vessels is Heron. The Queen is Salmon. So we have the water creatures here. The Knight of Vessels is Eel, and the Page is Otter. It's very interesting to me that they put the court cards in front, starting with the King, and I I always look when, when decks do the court cards in a different way, or the numbers in a different way, like starting from 10 down to 1, I always want to know why, why you do that, and they almost never tell you why. Page of Vessels is Otter. I said that already. Ace of Vessels is the Waters of Life. Two, Attraction. So with the love, or not the lover's card, but the, the Two of Cups. Look at the stag and the horse and the flaming heart pouring into the cups. That's really nice. Three of Vessels is Joy. Look at the, the cranes dancing. I keep saying herons, but probably more accurately cranes four of vessels is boredom that's fabulous and what is boredom really but you know i'm thinking about it i always look at that and think of disappointment you know the four of cups so you're kind of disappointment pointed and pulled back and withdrawn but um because i think about the emotion of being you know withdrawn pulling back from emotions but boredom is really kind of the lack of emotional engagement. That keyword just gave me new insight to that card, and I really like that. Five of Vessels is Ecstasy. Very different from the North Standard Tarot, five, where Five of Vessels shows kind of stress and drain, but this is Ecstasy. I like Ecstasy. Six of Vessels is Reunion. Seven, Mourning. Interesting. Eight is Rebirth. Another interesting twist because the Eight of uh, Cups usually shows someone walking away from a, cups that are stacked up. So walking away from um, situations that sort of drain your emotional energy or where your your emotional energy is not rewarded um this is rebirth so what happens when you walk away from that shit you get a rebirth nine of vessels is curiosity no generosity there we go generosity that makes a lot of sense ten of vessels is happiness indeed and then back to the wanderer so yes i love this deck i really love the imagery in it i love the keywords um, something I haven't done in a while. Let's see how, how and if we can shuffle this sucker because it is fat, fat, P-H-A-T. Oh, look. Oops. Yeah, kind of. Hey, hey, yeah. So though it is fat, it is springy and I can shuffle it. That makes me happy. I'm going to do three shuffles and a cut and then look up something here and take a look through the book. 
I notice I'm shooting long videos today. Maybe that happens because it's morning. I don't know. Yes. All right. And then, well, let's do three cut shuffles and then I'll pick one. One, two. It's a little chunky. A little chunky to hold to get your fingers around the edges of it. See what I mean? All right. And now we're just going to cut. Morning is the card that we get. So let's take a quick look at the book before we look that one up. Uh, we have Contents, Return to the Green, prefaced by Mark Ryan, The Wildwood Song, prefaced by John Matthews. Part 1, Into the Green, an introduction by Mark Ryan. Part 2, The Path Through the Forest, the cards and their meanings. Major Arcana, and then the suits. <clears throat> and then Part 3 is Finding Your Way, Working with the Cards, Notes on Your Readings, Resources, Further Reading, blah, blah, blah. So, Part 1, the best advice I ever got about Tarot was read the book, meditate with the cards, then put the book away and do your own thing. Put the book away, not throw the book away. Just, you know, the forest deeps. So we're, he's talking about a, as a boy growing up in New Yorkshire, England, and through the wildwood, we need wilderness and extravagance. Whatever shuts a human being away from the waterfall and the tiger will kill him. That's Robert Bly. Through the wildwood, confronting our warriors, accept thyself, asking questions. How do you know? but that every bird that cuts the airy way is an immense whole world of delight closed by your senses five. That's William Blake. There are three elements to asking questions of the tarot, the formulation of the question, the impartial layout of the cards, the interpretation of the layout. <clears throat> Fate and the tarot. I like reading the quotes here. Theoretical considerations of cause and effect often look pale and dusty in comparison to the results of chance. Indeed. Indeed. There's a wheel of the year laid out with a time of bows, time of vessels, time of stones, time of air, or arrows. The path through the forest, I have come to the unfathomable deep forest where all must lose their way, however straight or winding, soon or late. That's from Edward Thomas, lights out. Okay, let's look at seven of vessels. So with each, actually with each card, we've got the shaman, there's a position on the wheel. So that's cool. Um, where the card stands on the wheel, and then we have a description, a meaning, and reading points. Then we have roots and branches. The wild man of the woods, Merlin as teacher and adept, ancestral memory of wild animals, walker between worlds, the rituals and functions of the medicine man. And that's about the card, the shaman. So there's, um, those are for the major arcana. Let's go through these till we get to the suit of arrows. And then the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. That's Einstein. A lot of Einstein when I'm doing these reviews this morning. Position on the wheel, the period of spring moving from Imbolc through spring equinox toward Beltane. Um, element air, associations, creative intellect, conceptual dream strategy, projected wishes, communication, ambition, cunning, being of the mind. Okay. Um, but nothing about why we start with the court cards and take them from king back. All right. This is Vessels, which was the last. Seven of Vessels, Mourning. So for the miners, we have a description, a meaning, and reading points. A description, a human skull painted with an array of designs, including spirals, zigzags, and wavy lines, lies at the foot of a tree. Around it are scattered typical grave goods, five cups, an oil lamp, and an offering bowl. So the oil lamp and offering bowl uh, make up the last two of the vessels. So it's not just cups, it's vessels. One of these vessels uh, holds oil, and uh, one of them is an offering bowl. Meaning, this is a time to honor what is dead and mourn for what has gone. Indeed, 
Learn the lesson of letting go by offering thanks for cherished memories and being at peace with the past. Uh, one of the phone calls I got interrupted by uh, while I was in the middle of this review was um, my sister, and we were talking about how we're not going back. You know, we're not going, we're not just going to all of a sudden, the storm has passed and everything's back to normal. We have to mourn what is dead because we have to realize it's gone forever. We might reclaim parts of it, but they will be reclaimed in a changed fashion. They will not be the same. So some of what we're feeling as we're in trauma is grief for what we have lost and in the present moment, and it's, you know, we're missing it now, but that grieving process is something that could go on. And while you're grieving it in the moment and just, you know, for now I'm missing this, think about what would it be like if it never came back? What would I do? How would I change? To start sort of moving yourself into possible change before it even comes. And if you don't get to that place of absolute change and you get to reclaim some of it, well, so much the better. That's a bonus. But the more you can let go now, the more able you are to accept change. And remember that the cardinal rule of NLP, neurolinguistic programming, is the person with the greatest capacity for change wins. Always. Okay. Morning begins the pro this is the reading points. Morning begins the process of recovery after failure or bereavement. So there's grieving and then there's mourning. And they're talking about mourning being the process of recovery. This process may even be unconscious for we often do not realize what things were significant to us until they are gone. Mourning serves to ritualize the process of being at peace with loss and honor the passing of what is important and significant in a personal relationship. And personal relationship includes your relationship with your life as it was, not just person to person. It is you in relationship with the routine of your life and the substance of your life before everything changed. It allows the tidal flow of emotions to rise and fall naturally through the psyche and bring a sense of closure or completion and peace. This may take time, of course, and some losses are felt more acutely than others. As mourning is a very personal and individual process, sometimes taking years to complete. In Ireland, the wake exemplifies one way of processing and dealing with loss by turning the ritual into a celebration of life and achievement. The celebration of the completed journey and the beginning of a new one has been a part of the human mourning process since the dawn of time. Whatever the loss, whoever the wake is being held for, let them go with love and honor their passing with fond memories. Hold the golden, beautiful moments of life close and let their passing not go without a note of reverence for life fully lived. Very pertinent to what we're going through right now in the height of this pandemic in the U.S. I mean, we're probably not even at the height yet. New York is certainly a war zone. Where I live in Ohio, we're managing to contain things, but it's going to be this way for a long time time. So time to grieve, time to acknowledge how things have changed and accept those changes and steer those changes in the best way possible. So I've talked about, you know, getting away from Facebook and spending doing my shoots in the morning. So I have time for the shoots and then going to sewing in the afternoon. And what's getting sacrificed now is all this time wasted. I mean, not wasted. I'm engaging with people. I'm learning. I'm whatever. But time sucked away by Facebook. So that loss is your gain. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not grieving that loss. It feels good to get away from something that really does. Uh, Facebook has a, a strong attraction to it and it can be very addictive. So um, I would rather put that into something I'm also strongly attracted to, which is making these videos for you. And it is engaging my creative ability rather than just my anxiety, <laughs> which is what Facebook tends to do. So anyhow, that is the Wildwood Tarot. I would recommend this on all counts. Um, it's certainly got the it factor. It certainly spoke to me. Let's see how easily it goes back. Oh, perfectly in half. Um, 
it's a it's a gorgeous deck i love the reimaginings i love the keywords i've learned gotten some new insight into my regular tarot just by going through these keywords and not even really doing a full reading. And what I tend to do when I get new decks is I will look through them and then I keep them in order until I do a review and then I can really shuffle it up and start engaging with it. So, um, again, plans, you know, I've been planning to do more reading work and everything. And then I started, uh, sewing masks. So that need is going to supersede all of them. But in the meantime, I do have a plan to start doing some regular readings, you know, on a weekly basis, at least. We'll see what happens. You know me. I do what I can. Please engage with me. Please like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again on Friday with another Oracle unboxing. Until then, this is Luna, the Zen Witch. Blessed be.